Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Better, Faster, Stronger, Automating with Reveal RoboSuite. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You've joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. If you'd prefer to join over the telephone, just select phone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the question pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Today's webinar is being recorded and you will receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view the recording. I'd now like to introduce Falguna Rao, Head of Technology Partnerships, Asia, Pacific, and Japan for Blue Prism. Thank you, Cheyenne, for that. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, another edition of our uh, Tapinar series. Um, really excited today uh, to you know, take you guys through uh, what we have. Um, so before I introduce Carl uh, from the Reveal Group, I just uh, I wanted to give a, a quick background as to you know uh, where all of this lies and uh, and how this fits into what uh, Blue Prism is doing. Uh, next slide, Carl. So uh, as everyone knows, uh, Blue Prism uh, has been in the industry for a while. We've been uh, working uh, very strongly over the years in building, uh, you know, an enterprise class RPA platform over the years, which is really loved and uh, used by our uh, customers. Last year or two has been uh, a big focus on building uh, um, our ecosystem so that we are able to do more intelligent automation and uh, not um, a basic level of automation. So um, the work that we've been doing in building out this ecosystem has really transformed us into uh, a 70 plus uh, uh, ecosystem uh, technology partners uh, and lots of uh, uh, assets that we have built on our digital exchange, uh, close to a thousand plus assets today. And as we move along our uh, journey and uh, with the vision that we have about having a fully autonomous um, digital worker uh, based on certain use cases where uh, it can really think and act and on its own, um, that is where uh, we are leading to. But uh, as we go towards that, what is important to know is that as of today, there's that large ecosystem that we have. Uh, next slide, uh, Carl. Uh, that ecosystem that we have continues to grow. Uh, it's a it's a rich ecosystem of some very large uh, technology companies out there, as well as some niche ones who are really providing great tools and technologies which really help our customers. So you can see uh, Reveal Group is part of this, and um, uh, and. Uh, what I would really like to say is, you know, someone like Reveal Group uh, really fits um, very nicely in that space of uh, COE optimization as far as uh, Blue Prism is concerned. Um, if um, uh, well, I will not take thunder away from Carl, but if you're looking at um, tools and technologies which can really help you understand if you're designing right, uh, if you're um, when you're going into production, do you have everything, um, you know, right that you've already set in place. I think uh, tools from Reveal will really help you uh, scale as well as uh, help you uh, build it out in a very nice manner. And uh, Reveal has been uh, no newcomer to uh, you know Blue Prism or to RPA with uh, I think thousands of hours of experience and uh, being, uh, if I'm not wrong, the only double platinum partner for uh, Blue Prism. They've gone on to build these tools uh, with the immense amount of uh, knowledge that they have on uh, RPA as well as Blue Prism. So so uh, uh, with that, I think I'd like to hand it over to Carl, who's the principal um, from uh, Reveal Group, and uh, we'll be taking you through some of the uh, uh, points on uh, their products. Over to you, Carl. Thank you very much for that introduction, Falkuna. And thank you for having me. And to our audience, thank you for joining and welcome. In order to provide some context, as to how the RoboSuite came about, I'll do a brief introduction. Reveal Group goes back around 13 odd years now, and we were originally focused on operational excellence and workforce management. We actually offered our clients a software as a service solution back then already. And so we've been providing SaaS solutions for over 10 years now. Through that business, we were introduced to Blue Prism, and we became one of the first Blue Prism partners in the APAC region. 
We built our brand around high quality and our focus on developing true capability within our clients and ultimately enabling them to successfully scale their RPA programs. Last year at Blue Prism World, we received the Delivery and Excellence Award and we were also recognized as an HFS hot vendor. And as Felguna mentioned, this year we became Blue Prism's first platinum capability provider and platinum delivery provider. And we are currently the only double platinum Blue Prism partner in the world. And in line with Felguna's introduction, we share a connected RPA vision and have partnered with complementary technologies and vendors that serve to expand the use cases from upstream intake areas and to interact with and serve our clients in new ways. This is the first of two polls that we'll have in this session. And the results of this poll will give us all, the, the whole audience, a, a feel for where we each are in our robotic process automation and artificial intelligence journey. So I'll give you a minute to complete the poll now. So it's probably quite rare that we haven't started, but are considering it, although we do find that in the market. Then of course, we've got uh, some organizations that are starting to investigate and dip their toes in. So proof of concepts and proof of values. Many are in the infancy. And if we look at the results, they're quite interesting. So we've got, as we said, very few uh, that, that, that are in the infancy and most of us are in the under a year or that we've been on our journey for over a year already and then some a large portion actually have taken it to the next step so over several years we identified common challenges that organizations were experiencing as they scaled their automation programs many of these pertain to quality and getting development done right Things like excessive time spent in development, failures in production, bottlenecks, inconsistencies in delivery and benefits, and a general inability to make decisions using empirical data. To solve this, we built a suite of tools that we call the Reveal Robo Suite, and it's made up of the three tools you see on screen. We originally built these tools for ourselves to deliver internally, but we quick, quickly realized that if you could package and productionize them, we could share our IP with a larger audience in the hopes that all Blue Prism customers will experience the benefits. I'll introduce each of the tools from left to right so that you know where they fit in, starting with Robo Review, which has been extremely well received by our clients as it releases one of the biggest bottlenecks in the delivery stages of the life cycle, being the code review. Robo Review automatically reviews Blue Prism code against best practice. In the middle, we have Robo Designer, which takes existing design work that is part of the PDLC and specifically leverages an object design instruction template to automatically generate bespoke Blue Prism objects and actions to best practice. In our experience, this accelerates the initial part of the build by 80%. And Robo Manager, it's an end-to-end -end process lifecycle tool, taking processes from ideation through to production and providing transparency throughout the life cycle. It's also the operational management and methodology tool. So it's a single source of truth where we manage projects, pipeline and benefits, as well as being the documentation repository. Robo Review and Robo Designer, so the two products on the left in the middle, are packaged together and they are exclusive to Blue Prism, whereas Robo Manager is vendor agnostic. All are provided as a software as a service solution. Now that you've got some broader context, let's get into Robo Review specifically. As you can see on the slide, Robo Review is available on the Blue Prism Digital Exchange. So if you log into the DX, and search for Reveal Group, you'll find it. You'll also note that we offer different tiers of user licenses, and these can be paid by credit card or PO. 
It's not shown on the slide, but we do offer enterprise scale license options as well. So our second and final poll will give us all a feel for any of the common challenges that we are experiencing in our RPA programs. And I'll give you a minute to complete that now. Hopefully we don't have too many, but it'll be interesting to see where us as an audience find common challenges in our RPA programs and where these tools can potentially help. So the top one, of course, I'd say lack of program visibility and granular analytics, tied of course with high failure rate in production. Okay, nothing, nothing rare there, but very interesting, thank you. So if you ask me to describe it in a sentence, I'd say that Robo Review performs automated code reviews. Now code reviews are done at defined stage gates, at the end of the build and test phase, and at the end of the UAT phase of a delivery sprint. Typically these code reviews are done by the most experienced members of our team, usually the design authorities who perform code reviews using the Blue Prism code review checklist. This is a very manual, repetitive, detailed, technical, and error-prone task that goes down into the configuration details of the individual stages. The code review is time-intensive and even the very best make mistakes. So costly errors do slip through into production. Robo-review automates much of the code review process and provides assurance that best practice is being consistently applied making moving into production with confidence possible. Once we had developed and started using the tool, we learned a valuable lesson. Rather than only making the tool available to design authorities to perform code reviews, we found that by making Robo Review available to the developers themselves to use throughout their build process, provided them with regular, detailed, and actionable feedback on their adherence to best practice as they built. And what we saw was a rapid uplift in their understanding and capability. Also, the code review process became smoother and faster with little or no rework required post review. Using Robo Review ourselves has consistently removed traditional bottlenecks and materially accelerated the build and test and UAT phases of every sprint. In addition, for team leads and other members of management, Robo Review has an analytics module that provides unparalleled visibility and insight into the performance of developer teams and individual developers throughout the delivery. The analytics tell the story of how they are progressing and how the quality of their code is faring against best practice, how they are improving and potentially where they require targeted training and mentoring. We launched these tools to the market in January of this year. But prior to that, we launched them in beta with our top clients. And here is one of the resultant use cases for the automation program in an Australian telco. At the time, they had a large and growing team of developers, along with a large team of design authorities. As the number of developers increased, they found that their code review process became a significant bottleneck and due to time pressures, errors started to slip through that resulted in excessive failures in production. They thought that they needed to expand their team of design authority significantly to support what was planned to ultimately be a huge team of 40 squads of developers. The client used Robo Review and in doing so, reduced their code review time by 80%. And as a result, they were no longer required to expand their team of design authorities. And they also reported an increase in quality and reusability of their code 
compared to before. Robo Review enabled this client to scale quickly and effectively, which made the payback period extremely short and the business case was very attractive to them. Now, for a developer or a design authority, using Robo Review is a simple four step process. So the developer will save their current automation, generate a Blue Prism release file. They will then upload that Blue Prism release file to Robo Review. And in a matter of minutes, they will receive the code review report back via email. This detailed report will be an indexed score of the automation measured against best practice, along with information on how to improve the code. I've created a short demo that's going to showcase both the code review component and that's probably more relevant to developers design authorities as well as the analytics component which is more relevant to team leads and managers so we'll click off of that now so let's begin by navigating to the revealtools.com url in my browser and then authenticating using the username and password that I've been provided. On the left hand side, we'll then click on the Robo Review link. The Robo Review interface is sleek and intuitive. At the top, we have the Request a Details section, and these fields are pre populated based on the profile associated with my login details. This information is particularly relevant. To the analytics component that I will showcase shortly. In the middle we have the release details area and here we can select the delivery stage based on the delivery life cycle that we are currently in. Robo review scoring is different and appropriate to each of these stages. Say I'm in development at the moment and then I'll specify the Blue Prism release version here for version control purposes. In the attach release file section, I can either drag and drop or navigate to the release that I'd like to be reviewed. In this case, I'm going to be using the Blue Prism Advanced Consolidation Exercise release file. Once we've attached the release file, you'll see that Robo Review pulls apart the release into the, the processes and objects that are contained therein. I can select which objects or processes I'd like to be reviewed. So if I were a modeler, and since my last review, I've only made changes to, let's say, the quotes uh, object, and I'd like to only have that reviewed, I could select just that object or individual objects themselves, or I could elect to have everything reviewed. Native Blue Prism VBOs and utilities that come with Blue Prism are detected but they are not subject to review because we assume that they are compliant with best practice. I could then submit the release for review and I'll see a message saying that my request was submitted successfully and that I will receive a code review report by email shortly. This normally takes no, no more than five minutes. Instead of waiting for the email to come through, I've already submitted the, a release file, this release file for review, and we'll go through it while we wait for the report to be emailed to me. The information that was entered in the submission is at the top, and then each process and object uh, within the release is assigned a score. I won't go into the scoring in too much detail here, as I will touch on it more in the analytics discussion, but as you can see, each process and object is scored out of 100. I can either go to the individual tab that has been associated with each object or process, or I could use the appropriate hyperlink to navigate to the same. Each row corresponds to a best practice parameter that an object or process is assessed against. Each parameter has a weighting applied to it based on the impact to the automation with regard to things like maintenance, scalability, reusability, security, etc. These parameters correspond to those you'd expect to be contained in a build review checklist. 
On the left hand side, you can see, of course, for each parameter, the topic and the consideration that we're being assessed against and the results. So whether we are compliant, yes, not compliant at all, no, or if it's inconsistent, so frequently, for example. And then the impact of non-compliance and the area of impact. Where we are not fully compliant, a link is provided that will take us to the specific area in the errors and warnings tab that pertains to this area of non-compliance. So if I click on the link, it will take me to this specific area of non-compliance, where we'll see the consideration in question, the details about the error itself, and the exact location. So the object, for example, the page and the stage where relevant. Both errors and warnings should be reviewed and corrected. Typically, a warning indicates a more subjective item, and this ensures that developers are making considered decisions as appropriate. As mentioned, a modeler or developer could typically submit their code for review on a regular basis and then use the actionable feedback provided by RoboReview to correct the items as they progress through their build, and the design authority will typically use the RoboReview report in a similar manner at defined stage gates during the build and UAT stages of a delivery sprint. If I navigate back to the Robo Suite portal and take a brief look at the analytics that are available, RoboReview has analytics that provide unparalleled visibility and insights into teams and individual deliver, uh, developers throughout the delivery. I have filters where I can select the team that I'd like to review, and I can also specify the month for which I'd like to view the analytics. You'll notice that on the left-hand side, I can either look at a high-level team report, and I can even get into a more granular report on a per individual basis. We'll be looking at different stages, so those in development, test, or production stages of the delivery lifecycle. In this case, we're just looking at a team score for development. The top analytics here shows a weekly score for the team. The blue line indicates our object considerations and our compliance with best practice, our score, and the green for processes. We could look at tool, the, the actual tool usage, so volume utilization of the actual tool, so submissions on a weekly basis for this particular team. We could also see, I like this spidergram very much here, where we can actually drill down and we can see uh, the radar, so the performance by category. Now, as you've probably noticed, RoboReview scores best practice compliance against six dimensions that are listed here. Each dimension is made up of all the relevant Blue Prism best practice considerations. So here, we actually get much more granularity with regard to our compliance in each delivery stage against how is this team scoring for each of the dimensions. And we can get even more granular on the right-hand side here, breaking it down based on object and process considerations. At Reveal, we require our developers to score in the green, which means 91% and above. Anything from 70 to 90% would be amber, and anything below 70% would be red, and in all cases would require attention. We often perform capability build waves where our modelers deliver automation side by side with our clients' developers. And in doing so, we provide training and mentoring as they learn on the job and deliver automations. In this context, the analytics provides us with visibility into the areas where focused training, masterclasses, and mentoring is required. And being conscious of time, I'll just finish off by showing the fact that we can see team score ranges by category. And then we can also see on an object and a process consideration basis, we can actually see a lowest to highest team score. So we can see for every single dimension, 
uh, the actual considerations that are scored the lowest to the highest, and we can see where additional work and improvements and training, etc., is required. In the interest of time, I'll stop there and continue with the presentation. So we offer free trials for all of the RoboSuite tools, and you can simply go to our website www.revealgroup.com to register. There is also a RoboSuite information pack that will be made available to everyone who registered for this session. As part of the trials, we have training for RoboReview and RoboDesigner that is available online, and completing the training will earn you digital badges that you can share on LinkedIn. I encourage you to do the training. It takes well under an hour in total, and it's a great way to get a quick overview of the tools and a feel for how they work. Details for accessing the free training will be sent to you after this session. So it's all about increasing quality and speed, removing bottlenecks, driving the cost of delivery down and improving return on investment, increasing stability in production, the uplift in developer capability and achieving unparalleled program visibility and ultimately helping you to successfully scale. So what are your next steps? Trial the products. Sign up for the trial. It's a no obligation full feature trial, but I encourage you and your teams to make use of the tools and to experience the benefits. And if you're anything like me, you'll fall in love with the tools and wonder how we ever got by without them. Get certified, do the training, share your achievements on LinkedIn, and most importantly, we are here to support you. So please reach out if you need any help or if you have any questions. Now, with your permission, I'll throw it back to you, Falguna, for the questions and answers and wrap up. Thank you so much, Carl, for that. I think it was very interesting. We do have a few questions here, and uh, let's uh, quickly go into those questions. I think one of the first questions uh, that came up is, uh, can the scoring criteria be, be tweaked uh, based on customer requirements? Dr. Gune, if I, if I understand correctly, they're saying, can the scoring criteria be tweaked based on a customer requirement? Uh, yeah. The answer is yes. Um, the tool's obviously been built uh, so that it actually measures the gains through prism best practice and also our years of experience in the industry. So, so generally, it's not a requirement. Um, however, it is possible for our customers to, for example, have specific customized naming conventions or where they'd like us to flip errors and warnings or something like that out of the box. Uh, anything that's that's um, more, I suppose, more material than that is done on a case-by-case -case basis. But yes, the tool is designed in a modular fashion on the back end to allow for client-specific configurations. Okay, fantastic. Um, going on to the next question, um, you know, where is the data stored? Um, you know, when you upload the data into RoboReview? This is a question from, I think, Andreas, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so Grina, it's, we, we get these kinds of questions fairly often when it comes to the tools, and you can imagine why. Organizations have got strict security and privacy requirements and the likes. And so when it comes to robo-review, uh, the, the, the good news is, of course, is that um, you know, we, we, you're not uploading um, you know, a lot of your process or internal IP or whatever it might be. But the tool itself, um, so RoboReview, is hosted on Microsoft Azure, and uh, and so so that and that's where the review is actually done. Okay. Thanks for that, uh, Charles. Um, one of the other questions that we have is, um, you know, they would like to know what uh, about the lowest RoboReview uh, codes that you have seen, and what was involved in remediating these. <laughs> yeah, you know, obviously it's it's the kind of thing where you know we use this tool significantly internally first, 
and and even our developers of course saw a significant uplift and a lot of our customers when we actually go in uh, to the environment and i would expect when when people license the tool and start to see the benefits it'll normally be be used in a remediation type scenario so sometimes not from new build some clients actually have existing automations that are either part way or actually in production and sometimes uh, you know they're not happy with the results and they and they'd like a, an independent review if you will and they submit to the tool generally as they progress as these tools progress from development to testing to production those scores go up significantly thanks to the tool um, but 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 definitely when we do go into certain environments where there are challenges with the the um, production processes and we do assess them uh, we can almost we seem psychic when we tell the client we assume that these are the challenges that you're having based on the report itself but in terms of you know visibility the client would have visibility to to to, to their code itself so it's not something that we yeah. have visibility through to be able to uh, you know give you stats or anything like that Fantastic. Um, I th there are a lot more questions, Carl, so I don't know if we'll be able to answer all of them. Uh, 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 if we can probably take uh, one last question and then um, just to let everyone know that we will get back to all of you with all the questions that are there uh, and we'll give you a list of answers for all of that along with uh, any links or documents that you could uh, refer to. Uh, but uh, before we go, I think um, just one last question uh, there for you Carl and that would be saying uh, you know uh, what are the reporting capabilities that are available uh, inside of Robo Review? Falguna, yeah absolutely we'll make sure that we circulate all of the questions and answer all of them to, the, to all of the registered uh, um, audience members but to answer your question I, you know you, you obviously got to see the analytics in the in the demonstration to some degree um, and you know, it has a, a comprehensive analytics engine, as you've seen. Generally, of course, this allows development leads, design authorities, and also uh, the automation executives to, to look at quality scores across the organization. What we didn't have time for is to actually go into the granularity that one can go down to. So you could look at teams, you could look at individual developers themselves, you could look at it by date, uh, risk category, and review consideration. So you could actually look at it at a very granular or a, a really high level. And generally one of the powerful things here is, is that you, you do tend to be able to see where your teams require more focus, uh, more training, more mentoring. Okay. Thanks for that, Carl. Uh, I, I think I think this, the session has been um, uh, quite interesting and uh, looking at all the questions that's coming in from everyone I do believe uh, there is a fair amount of interest uh, there are people asking for uh, I think access to uh, training links as well as uh, you know, uh, details about the product so uh, unfortunately uh, I think we are uh, over time right now and uh, we'll surely get back to all of you uh, with uh, the answers to all the questions that you have asked and uh, Keen to see how we can uh, continue to engage uh, and support uh, you know the customers as well as some of our partners who are here uh, in uh, in the automation journey that you are in. So thank you so much, Carl, for uh, joining our uh, tap in our series, and uh, I look forward to uh, continuing this moment. Thank you to you, Falguna, and also to all of our audience members. Yeah, thank you, everyone.